Hey everybody, Tucker here from Electric Cycle Rider, and today I'm riding the Zero DSR, which is a big, bad electric dual sport. Now this thing is a beast. It's putting out 70 horsepower and 116 foot-pounds of torque via a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery and a 775 amp controller. I'm gonna take it on some open country roads, some mountain canyons, and then we'll go find some off-road trails and see how it does in the dirt. All right, before we get going, I'm gonna find some trails and I'm gonna do that using Onyx Off-Road, which is the sponsor of this video and the app that I use to find trails. Uh, it's super sweet, it's really easy to use. Uh, I've been using Onyx for a while. Uh, actually been using their Hunt app for a long time and they recently came out with this off-road app which is super cool to find trails. So you can zoom in, zoom around, that's where we are right now. And where we're going, I think I'm gonna ride one of their featured rides on Onyx which is Switzerland Trail. Uh, it's a OHV road and should be, you know, the difficulty rating on here says difficult, but I think it's a, a decent test for this bike. The cool thing about future trails is it gives you a lot of info on what you're riding, overviews, photos, that type of thing. Um, there's plenty of trails that are not featured that you could also find. And if you're riding trails and you want to drop waypoints, it's super easy to just do that. You can drop a waypoint and you have all of these icons to choose from to let you remember what it is that you were looking at there. Uh, you can color code them, take photos, leave notes, that kind of thing, which is super helpful. Another really helpful tool that I'm gonna be using today is the fact that you can download offline maps, which is helpful in the sense that I'm gonna be losing service. So I still wanna be able to see where I'm riding. And these green boxes here show that I have those areas downloaded offline and I'll be able to zoom in and see everything that I'm doing. Uh, you can change it from topo to a hybrid or full satellite which when you zoom in you can really see terrain and different features, the trails, all that. So really nice feature. I usually just ride it in topo unless I need to actually see something. Uh, on the pro version you can see all of the different uh, boundaries, which is really helpful to know if you're on public lands or private land because that does matter. All right, so now that I got my ride planned, let's go do just that. Let's go ride this thing. All right, so we're in sport mode to start, and I'm going to test the acceleration on this thing. Give it a handful. Yeah, it gets going. All right, it's about 90 miles an hour. Gets there pretty fast. <laughs> uh, it's just a crazy sensation when the bike doesn't shift. You don't have to shift through gear. So it's like a very wild sensation. So smooth. So this bike is putting out 116 foot pounds of torque, which is quite a lot. Uh, a lot of cars are in that range even. So uh, 70 horsepower, 116 foot pounds of torque and you feel it when you get on it in sport mode it goes so really smooth acceleration you're not shifting through gears or anything like that this bike is belt driven and that makes it extremely quiet and extremely smooth you can put a chain on they do have chain kits for these bikes which if you're riding a lot of off-road wouldn't be a bad thing to do but certainly would give up some of that quietness with a, a chain drive but this particular one is belt driven um yeah really nice really smooth this bike has a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery and a 775 amp controller so it's putting out a lot of good power so i'm riding the base model which comes in at just shy of sixteen thousand dollars but you can get a bunch of different add-ons for this bike, uh, which specifically I'm thinking of the charge tank and the power tank. So right here, this cubby uh, is empty. Like you can put things in it. You've got a little bit of storage space, which is actually a really nice feature, but 
If you were to do the power tank or the charge tank, this cubby is replaced by either a fast charger, so you could go to level two charge stations for cars and that type of thing and do a very quick charge on it, or you could have more range, which is an offering from the power tank. Uh, I think what I would pick personally is the charge tank because having that fast charge option would be a really nice feature. Um, it does take a while to charge this thing, not gonna lie. Uh, they claim about 10 hours on 110 volt to charge this thing with the setup that it has now. But if you have the charge tank, uh, that's only about two hours. Uh, so that's totally worth it in my opinion. So let's talk about range a little bit. Uh, the range that I've experienced on this bike has been I would say like roughly one mile per 1% of battery. And that's riding on sport mode and kind of mixed city open road riding. So uh, roughly getting about a hundred miles on this bike. If you're riding in eco mode um, or just riding a lot easier, you could manage to get somewhere more towards, I would say 120 uh, to maybe 140 miles on the bike. So really just like anything depends on how you're riding it if you're doing those fast accelerations like i was just doing the battery's not going to last too long but uh yeah 100 miles is pretty darn good so speaking of those power modes uh, i'll take an opportunity to put this thing in eco real quick uh like i said earlier i'm in sport mode right now and it looks like there's a lot of cars so yeah probably a good opportunity to test out eco okay so, eco mode. Hard acceleration. Really subdued in eco mode. Um, yeah, you're gonna save a lot of battery. I mean, that's really where you burn battery up are those hard accelerations. So in eco mode, if I just fully give it throttle, pretty slow to jump out of the gates as you would expect. But if you're just riding around the city or you know up to speed on the highway, like riding in eco, I mean, it's just cruising right along at speed, just fine. Um, pretty nice, nice feature there to just save some battery life if you're not trying to rip on the bike. But another option you could do is put it into custom mode, which Zero has a Bluetooth app that you can use to fine tune all the little parameters that you want this bike for regen and power output, top speed, all that type of thing. You can do a, a custom mode. This is the base model and I was not able to connect it via Bluetooth. So uh, I'm not sure if that's like an added feature that you need to pay a little extra for. Zero hopefully can school me on that. But um, sport or eco are the two options that I've been playing with on this bike. And to be honest, obviously sport is fun. So let's put it back in sport. Want to give a shout out to Elite Motorsports in Loveland, Colorado. Those guys set me up with this Zero DSR. Great shop. If you're looking for a Zero, they've got pretty much the whole lineup. So if you're a Colorado local, check those guys out. All right, getting into the canyon a little bit here. Got some twisties coming up. Man, this bike is just so butter smooth. Oh man. Yeah. It's just a really comfortable ride. It's so quiet, so smooth, and tons of power. Tons of power to overtake vehicles if you need to. It just gets up and it goes. Brakes feel really nice on this bike. They're Bosch brakes, uh, ABS. It's got a 320 millimeter front rotor. Man, this bike is just so smooth, <laughs> so fun. And what a good road to be testing it on. Yeah, so ABS, um, I usually like turning ABS off. I will just leave it on for now. 
there's a little bit of a song and dance that you need to do to turn the ABS off. So I'm gonna wait to do that. Um, definitely gonna turn it off for the off-road section that I do because I really hate ABS in the dirt, as I'm sure most people do. But it's a nice feature that it exists. Suspension is fully adjustable Showa suspension. Subaru is killing my fun right now. But yeah, anyways, yeah, Showa suspension feels really good on the road here. Uh, I'll be curious to see how it holds up when we go off-road. It has got 41 millimeter forks up front, which, you know, in the off-road segment, might look a little undergun, but they feel pretty stiff, so we'll see how it does. This bike weighs 419 pounds the way that it's set up right now. Not exactly a light bike, but it's an electric motorcycle, so it doesn't have the rotating mass that you get with an internal combustion bike, and it makes the bike feel really light and agile. So on the scale, yeah, might be a little heavy, but Finally, yes, they're turning. Beautiful. Open road, once again. Man, this thing just gets up and goes. Ah, such a fun machine. No shortage of power on this bike, that's for sure. It does have a top speed though. I want to say it's like 103 or 104 miles per hour. I have gotten it up to near there, but not quite there yet. So it is governed. It's just a comfortable bike. It's got this nice kind of upright ADV style body positioning. I really like that. Just a very comfortable, smooth bike to ride. And yeah, it's doing great in this canyon here. So this bike is rocking the Pirelli MT60 tires. I've got them set to 30 PSI right now. And yeah, they're doing really great on the road. Uh, I believe that they're a little bit more road bias than dirt. And that's okay, because this bike, I would argue, is a little bit more road bias than dirt the way that it is anyways. It's got a 19 inch front wheel and a 17 inch rear wheel. Uh, they're both cast wheels, gold in color, really sharp looking wheels actually makes the bike pop. Um, that is definitely another sign that it's a little bit more of a street motorcycle because if it were dirt, they would probably have gone to spoked wheels. All right, let's get this thing on some dirt. It's a little wet up here. It's been raining a lot, so it should be nice and sloppy and slippery. We'll just ease into this dirt scene here. These are pretty mellow, county-maintained dirt roads, so not quite an OHV road. And I have been told that this hill that I'm about to go up right now is actually the steepest county-maintained road in the country, if not potentially the world. Is what I'm told. I'm not, the world sounds like a stretch to me, but country, I might not argue. Here we go. This is the steep part here. I have been down this in the winter in a blizzard, and I can attest that it is steep and sketchy. I'm sure the camera's not doing it justice. Maybe if I look off to the side, you'll see. I don't know, but it's steep. <laughs> it's fun to scoot up this thing with all this torque. You just grab a 
little bit of a handful. Woo! Slide the rear end out there. That's fun. It is pretty slippery, so. I'm not surprised that I'm getting a little slip with the rear wheel there, but that's good. It's good for riding off road to have that power. Yeah. Making easy work of this, though. Bike feels right at home on these dirt roads here. But yeah, bike's getting good traction. Feels really smooth, even on these like washboard kind of chattery, bumpy type sections with rocks, potholes, that type of stuff. Suspension feels really good on it. It's holding up a little bit stiffer than I even thought it might be. 41 mil forks, hanging tough. What I noticed about this bike, and I'm definitely gonna test this theory once we get off road here, but it's just so agile. Um, it's got pretty low center of gravity and it feels really easy to kind of maneuver around little potholes and bumps and that type of stuff. Look at that view. GoPro's probably not picking that up like I can see it with my own eyes, but man, springtime in the Rockies, everything green, and then you look off into the distance, you got those beautiful snow-capped peaks. What a time of year to be in Colorado. And what a bike to be on. This thing is so fun, man. Oh, I really like this thing. Here we are, folks, the beginning of the actual dirt section. So what I'm gonna do right now is two things. I am going to turn off the ABS on this bike, which is a little bit of a procedure, which I'll show you. And I'm also going to start tracking my ride on Onyx. So let's start with that. I've had this up the whole time. I'm gonna record my track here. Pretty sweet. You can see that I'm on the featured ride right now, which is that blue line. So we're just going to be following that down. <clears throat> now to shut off ABS, I'm going to shut the bike off. Kickstand needs to be down, bike needs to be off. The switch needs to be in the off position. And then you turn the bike on. Wait for that to fire up. And then you're supposed to hold the ADJ and mode button at the same time for four seconds. And now you see ABS is flashing. That means that the ABS is shut off. And that's what I want because it's nice to be in control of the motorcycle when you're riding it off-road. All right. Let's ride some dirt. So this road will gradually get a little more technical. You can see all the rain that we got, these big puddles, scooting around these nice, whoo. All right. I'm still at 30 PSI because I'm gonna go back on the road after this, but probably not the best PSI to be running off road, but we are going to run it. Show of suspension. Doing a good job. The stuff is actually pretty stiff. Um, I haven't messed with any of the clickers or anything. It's fully adjustable so you can do um, rebound and compression and adjust preload and all that. So nice to have those features because I know on some other bikes of this ADV category, you don't have that option to adjust suspension. Um, but yeah, the way that it's set up out of the box for me right now, it's feeling really good. Dodging some rocks, roots here. Yeah, like I said, like not a overly technical trail. Uh, Onyx has it labeled as a difficult trail and it does get difficult. I mean, there's some drop offs there if you Look right down, yep. <laughs> Don't wanna be falling off there, but 
Yeah, it's rocky. Certainly, this bike can handle more. I will put it that way. Would I want to push it through stuff much harder than this? It's probably not what it was designed for, no. But if you're riding these type of OHV trails on the weekend and that's the type of riding you do, then I think it's a very suitable bike for that. The bike does feel really nimble. I like not having the ABS on. It's nice to swing the rear wheel around a lot. You can grab some brake and slide it. Super fun. It's like, it's just really agile. It's got such a low center of gravity, you can feel it. Like it's, you can turn the bike really easy and it makes it feel really nimble. It's actually pretty damn good off-road. Surprisingly, like you look at it and it's a relatively big hunkin' motorcycle. Um, it does have that aggressive off-road look about it, but I wasn't expecting it to necessarily shine off-road, but man, that feels really good. So I'm standing up, I'm a shorter rider. I don't feel too hunched over, but I could see if you were taller, probably wanting to put bar risers on this bike or higher handlebars if you're riding a lot of off-road and standing up. But I'm in a good attack position. I like the angle of the bars. Everything on it feels really nice and comfortable for me. Man, what a blast. I really, really like this bike. It's, it's so fun. I mean, it's just like, I love how quiet this thing is. I'm just having a blast on this thing. All right, so there you have it. The first ride on the Zero DSR. I'm super impressed with this bike. I really, really like it. It's of a different category than what I normally ride. I'm not much of a street rider. I will be straight up honest with you guys. I am a dirt off-road rider, but uh, I do love linking trails together. And I think that this is a awesome bike to do that. Uh, if you're riding, you know, ADV style stuff where you're on dirt roads and maybe some kind of somewhat technical OHV trails. This is a sweet bike to check out. You get a lot more range than a lot of electric bikes. Uh, yes, it's heavier, but don't let that scare you because 420 pounds sounds like a lot on a scale. This bike rides really light and nimble. The low center of gravity and the fact that it's electric just makes the bike really quick to turn and really easy to ride off-road. So I think if you were riding off-road and put some maybe more aggressive dirt tires on it, this thing would be a really cool candidate for a adventure style bike. Um, one thing that I would recommend just after having to charge it on my own is like I said, the uh, 110 volt charge takes roughly nine to 10 hours to go from fully dead to fully charged, which is a long time. So uh, for 2,500 extra dollars, you can get that charge tank. If I were to build this bike for myself, that's what I would do. Outside of that, really good suspension, adjustable, really good brakes. Uh, the bike just feels really fun to ride. It's incredibly smooth and yeah, just a cool category of bike. I'm psyched to be able to test it. So big thanks to Onyx Off-Road for sponsoring this video. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check out Onyx Off-Road. It's an app that I use legitimately all the time for my off-road rides and it comes in really handy to kind of mark where you want to go and where you've been. So check those guys out and yeah, thanks for watching guys. Take it easy. Uh -huh.